In this lecture, we are going to learn about input output in operating system. So we are going to learn about input output devices. So what they do. So, so far we have learned that, okay, how do we manage our central processing unit? Okay, and how do we manage our memory? So like virtual memory and pH tables and so on we saw, but we haven't seen how we do input output. Input output is in fact very necessary. So you learn, see, you first know, okay, how you print something to the monitor or how you input something through the keyboard. So these all come under input output that how you basically give some data to the computer or, or take something as an input, read something from somewhere okay, and so on. So without input output, computers are useless. Okay, so those are like the so gateway for the outer world. Okay, so you can read from some disk okay and some person can give some input so they are disembodied brains it's same and thousands of devices are there okay so you have pen drives you have your ipod uh, you have your cd drives so many things are there how can we standardize the interfaces to these devices okay so now so many product vendors are there your operating system let's say linux or your microsoft windows so how they know that okay these they have different devices how to call their input output okay so how to instruct them so it's something similar to one person is one pen drive might be following instructions in french for a layman and some pen drive for example it might say that i know english another one can say i know german so you how will a person okay know that okay which language he needs the instruction in so how to standardize next devices might be unreliable so we are just looking at if we are making some input output system so what are the problems that we will face so until you know all the problems you cannot design a system that is well so devices are unreliable isn't it so when you are transferring media okay fail media failures transmission errors can come so how can we make something reliable so it means i send some data okay it was lost you didn't receive it i come to know here as an operating system but the user doesn't know so i will again retransmit this time i get a success and user will only see that okay i got success so this is their devices are unpredictable and they might be slow so how can we manage them if we don't know what they will do or how they will perform okay so we have the so user is the boss here and he doesn't this input output system is a basically a black box and this user of the operating system he just wants that okay whatever he's getting is fine and he doesn't care that how input output system in your operating system manages them okay so some operational parameters that we will see are that your device input output device so they have what they can read okay so they will be reading or they might be writing to the input output device okay so i might be reading from a disk cd i might be writing to a hard disk okay so now it goes in two different ways so i can read one character at a time those are called character devices like your keyboard i only read single byte at a time or write other provide whole blocks of memory okay so disks from networks you can take whole block of several bytes of memory so there are sequential and then some operations are sequential so if you have let's say a tape then memory can only be accessed sequentially so if you have to go to the hundred and tenth memory location so you go one two three four till hundred and ten okay so you cannot directly go there so it's something like a linked list and then there are some that can be accessed randomly like a disk so there or a cd so you can directly jump to hundred and tenth location without moving around traversing the whole 
one two three four five till 109 memory locations so this is there then there are two different kinds of basically uh, how we access the data one is known as polling so polling is another very important feature okay so polling let's try to draw it something here okay let's see we have polling and another one is interrupt so polling means that i have a cpu i have a process or a thread and let's say i have an input output device so my process i'm a person or a process you can always have an analogy so in polling i will be going to this person or i will be checking the door has my parcel come okay has my mail come so i will be checking let's say after every five minutes or in fact every one minute so here your cpu or your process also is checking after every let's say one second five seconds even some 10 milliseconds it's checking the input output device to find if it is ready okay and if there is some data in to read or if the device is ready for writing but hit this one wastes your cpu cycles because i'm polling every time i'm doing work and it's still it's not ready i'm just uselessly i'm checking it so there is a better thing known as interrupt okay so this person i'm a person okay and i'm doing some work okay i might be sleeping i might be cooking whatever i might be playing and then suddenly your input output your postman comes and he says he just says ting tong open the door i open it so it's an interrupt okay and he will tell me how much data i have got i will take it okay so this is there now let's come back to our original so this is the interrupts which are generated to be serviced okay and let's see clear all okay so that's good now it's looking better so now let's see some pictorial representation of modern input output system so you have a monitor here okay this is an output device so monitor so how monitor has a graphics card okay so it displays something so this is a hardware device isn't it and it needs a it has a graphics controller okay and this is the pci bus through which every of these input output device is connected to our cpu then you have your memory here okay so it has a cache it's connected by a memory controller so every device has a device controller scuzzy controller is there for the disks okay so we have a scuzzy controller so your disks are here and then you have a keyboard okay keyboard operates via so there is a parallel port printer works via parallel port and your joystick your webcam they work by a serial port so these are there then their disk controllers are there so these output devices input devices are there okay and they are connected through the pci bus okay centrally and each of these devices they will have their own mini cpu memory and everything so that they can operate a small hardware which has very few instruction sets okay just two very primitive operations like read write open the device close the device very few of them are given some control operations also okay so now let's try to see so this is there okay so again clear all so we move so devices now they are becoming much faster keyboard is very slow device okay transfer rates 0.01 units and then mouse is faster modem is much faster your hard disks are faster ethernet is even much faster okay gigabit plane bus so devices rates vary or many orders of magnitude so how fast you can do input output so you have your cpu here you have your memory so how fast if there is a internet card okay your lan card how fast you can get data into the memory of your computer or how fast you can pump data out okay better not have high overhead byte for fast devices okay so let's try to see so now 
goal of our input output system so what are the goals provide uniform interfaces okay so we saw there are so many different devices but it says that very important thing uniform interface should be there your operating system when you are making code for it so you cannot know that okay you are not knowing that nvidia tomorrow will make a new graphics card or new better company will come which will have some better let's say audio device at okay so you cannot program for them so you need some interface uniform interface so that when some input output device connect whatever interface calls you give they will do the same work so despite wide range of them there should be some uniform interface so this code works on many different devices so i open some device and i say f printf some count okay and then close it so these are very important open some device close device with file descriptor write to it so this should work okay so this is some system call i'm making okay this f printf will make some call to uh, write okay write system call and this write also the system call in fact this can write to your disk your tape Uh, to the monitor and so on but so that there should be some interface okay so which is a uniform interface so how it is managed so this is the work of your hardware okay input output devices okay so if monitors let's say are there so some samsung monitors sony monitors so they might have different hardware okay they might have some different instruction sets and so on and they have a little device controller on that okay device controller so which has some instruction sets okay so this might uh, the instructions might be read write okay open close and so on so your device to so they should provide a device driver okay so device driver is a software so whenever you plug something so device driver is installed so this device driver is the uniform plugin so it knows this language okay so it's kind of an interface this one let's say this person it's kind of translator this person is this device understands french this understands german okay but we say that okay english let's say is some international language okay and let's say one indian person say he make some device which understands hindi french german hindi three other but your computer okay so it will be difficult for this person to design every to understand everything okay separately that code will be huge and it's not possible so what will he do and but the thing is each of them will have the only few main basic things you read from the device you write to the device and open it close it many standard operations so what this device driver does so they will provide all these devices they will provide their device drivers so this will be installed on your operating system now whatever system calls are given device driver for these device will understand it and then it will tell to this english it will tell it to the hindi person in hindi it will tell to the french person in french to read something it will tell in german to the german device to write something and so on okay so here it will be the same thing a coder will write write function a system call operating system but this is the work of the device driver to make others understand okay so this is there now why because code that controls devices implements standard interface so it's the work of device driver we will try to get a flavor of what is involved in actually controlling devices okay so that's there one standard interface for device okay so block devices now you might have a block devices which can transfer data in block like disk drive tape drive cd rom access blocks of data so they include commands like open the device read write or seek go to some place and directly read from there raw input out file system access memory mapped okay so we will see this is also important memory mapped device and dma okay direct memory access so character devices like keyboard serial ports mouse 
that's where there are some USB devices. Single characters are read, so get and put other some functions they have. And then we might have network devices, okay, Ethernet, wireless network, Bluetooth. They are different and they provide socket interfaces to read and write and other options also they provide, okay. Then there is what is there about timing, okay, so blocking interface. So one is that, okay, when I'm reading or writing to input output device, I request some data, read system call I make, put the process to sleep until data is ready. So I ask the process to go there, it asks for reading something and till the data is not there, it will be waiting, okay, so wait. So this is blocking, when write data, so I'm writing something, put process to sleep until device is ready. This is one paradigm. Other is non-blocking interface. I cannot wait. Okay, so I just say return quickly from read or write request with count of bytes successfully transfer. Read may return nothing, write may return nothing. Okay, I don't care. I cannot wait. Okay, I just say him. If he does, that's fine. Otherwise, I return. Asynchronous transfer. Tell me later. Okay, another thing is asynchronous. A request to data, take pointer to the user. I tell that, okay, I request some data from the input output device. I tell him that, okay, please store it here, I'm going. And then what he does, kernel will fill the buffer and then he will notify that, okay, it is done now, you can come. Okay, so this is asynchronous. So, this is there, this is some chipset of Intel, they're telling, okay, what are the, you have PCI bus, disk controllers, audio interrupt controllers and so on. So I think this is enough for this first lecture, okay? And then we will see how, what is direct memory access, how processors actually talk to the device and so on. So I hope you understood a little bit about input output systems in your operating system. So thanks a lot.